Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're diving into how vitamin D may slow early-stage multiple sclerosis. We'll unpack the newest clinical findings and practical ways to optimize vitamin D for nervous system protection. Joining me is co-host Alara Skye, who brings a strong focus on natural health. Thanks, Ethan. The study we'll discuss, published in JAMA in March 2025, examined very high-dose vitamin D in people with clinically isolated syndrome, the earliest detectable phase of multiple sclerosis. The results suggest vitamin D can delay progression before full-blown disease develops, offering hope for those at greatest risk. Before we dive into the research, let's start with the basics. Multiple sclerosis is often described as an autoimmune attack on myelin, the insulating sheath around nerve fibers. When myelin breaks down, electrical signals falter, leading to symptoms that can affect movement, vision, and cognition. Is that a fair overview? Exactly. Myelin loss leaves nerve fibers exposed, disrupting communication between the brain and the rest of the body. Lesions appear on MRI scans, and symptoms vary based on where damage occurs, anything from numbness and muscle weakness to balance problems or brain fog. The process can begin silently, which is why early detection matters. You mentioned clinically isolated syndrome, or CIS. How does CIS differ from full-blown MS? And why is it such a pivotal window for intervention? CIS is the first episode of neurological symptoms lasting at least 24 hours and linked to measurable lesions on MRI. About 85% of people with CIS eventually develop MS. Because the immune assault is already underway but disability is minimal, clinicians view CIS as a critical moment to slow or halt progression. For years, low vitamin D has been tied to higher MS risk, especially in populations farther from the equator. But earlier supplementation trials were mixed. What sets this 2025 French study apart? Previous trials often had small sample sizes, short follow-ups, or patients taking powerful immune-suppressing drugs that muddied results. The new study focused on people not yet eligible for MS medication, used a rigorous placebo-controlled design, and followed participants for two full years, allowing clearer insight into vitamin D's standalone effect. Let's look at the dosing. Participants received 100,000 international units of vitamin D, three every two weeks, roughly 20 times a typical supplement. That sounds enormous. What were the researchers aiming for with such a high dose? They wanted to push serum levels into the upper optimal range quickly and sustain them. High doses under medical supervision can elevate vitamin D to 60 to 80 nanograms per milliliter, a target associated with immune regulation and neuroprotection. Frequent monitoring ensured calcium levels and kidney function stayed safe. Now to the outcomes. How did high-dose vitamin D compare with placebo in delaying disease activity? The key measure was time to either a new relapse or fresh MRI lesions. Vitamin D doubled that interval, 432 days versus 224 days in placebo. Only 46% of the vitamin D group developed new lesions, compared with 59% on placebo. Aggressive disease activity was cut nearly in half, from 34% to 19%. Impressive numbers. Safety always matters with megadoses. Were there any supplement-related adverse events? Severe adverse events were actually tracked, but none were attributed to vitamin D itself. The complications observed were unrelated, suggesting high-dose vitamin D, when medically managed, is well-tolerated, an important point for clinicians considering early intervention. Beyond statistics, listeners often ask how vitamin D might protect nerves. Let's dig into mechanisms. What does current science show about vitamin D's cellular actions in the brain? First, vitamin D stimulates oligodendrocyte progenitor cells, which rebuild myelin. Laboratory studies demonstrate increased production of proteins like MBP and PLP after vitamin D exposure. In animal models, that translates into thicker myelin sheaths and improved nerve conduction. Microglia, the brain's immune sentinels, can exacerbate damage when they stay in attack mode. Does vitamin D influence their behavior? Yes. Vitamin D shifts microglia from an inflammatory M1 phenotype to a healing M2 state. 
that reduces harmful cytokines such as TNF-alpha and IL-6 while boosting protective signals, like IL-10. The switch dampens tissue destruction and supports debris clearance essential for repair. Another barrier against MS progression is the integrity of the blood-brain barrier. How does vitamin D fortify that line of defense? It increases tight junction proteins that seal gaps between endothelial cells, limiting immune cell infiltration. Simultaneously, it lowers adhesion molecules that would otherwise act like Velcro for rogue immune cells. Animal research shows fewer peripheral immune cells cross into the brain when vitamin D is adequate. Oxidative stress accelerates neural injury. Any evidence vitamin D tackles that? Absolutely. Vitamin D upregulates antioxidant enzymes, glutathione peroxidase and superoxide dismutis, and activates NRF2, a master switch for endogenous antioxidant defenses. Lower reactive oxygen species create a biochemical environment that favors healing over degeneration. Let's translate these insights into practical guidance. Optimal blood levels fall between 60 and 80 nanograms per milliliter. For many, that starts with sensible sun exposure. What constitutes sensible in your view? Expose larger skin areas midday until just below the point of redness, often 10 to 20 minutes for lighter skin, longer for darker tones. The sunburn test helps each individual gauge their limit. People who consume high linoleic acid seed oils may need extra caution because oxidized fats heighten skin damage. Season, latitude, and lifestyle can limit sun access. In those cases, supplementation becomes essential. Why is vitamin D3 preferred over D2? D3 is identical to the form your skin synthesizes and raises serum levels more efficiently. D2, often plant-derived, is less potent and has a shorter half-life. For most adults without significant sun, daily intakes of 4,000 to 8,000 IU, or medically supervised bolus doses, are required to maintain optimal status. Testing is the only way to confirm you're in range. How often should listeners check their vitamin D? Twice yearly is ideal. Once at the end of winter, when stores are lowest, and again in late summer, when sun exposure peaks. Adjust sun habits or supplements based on those results, always aiming for that 60 to 80 nanograms per milliliter sweet spot. Vitamin D works best in concert with magnesium, calcium, and vitamin K2. Could you highlight why balance matters? Magnesium is required to convert vitamin D into its active hormonal form. Vitamin K2 directs calcium into bones and away from arteries, preventing calcification when vitamin D drives calcium absorption. A nutrient-dense diet, leafy greens, fermented foods, grass-fed dairy, typically supplies what supplementation alone might miss. For someone recently experiencing CIS, what immediate steps could they take, alongside medical care, to harness vitamin D's benefits? Get a baseline vitamin D test, discuss high-dose protocols with a knowledgeable clinician, begin regular sun exposure within safe limits, eliminate seed oils to lower oxidative stress, and ensure adequate magnesium and K2 intake. Small lifestyle shifts can complement medical supervision and potentially slow disease momentum. We've covered disease basics, cutting-edge clinical evidence, and actionable strategies, all anchored in rigorous research, not conjecture. The takeaway is clear. Maintaining optimal vitamin D status may delay MS progression and bolster overall neuroprotection. Precisely. While vitamin D isn't a standalone cure, its wide-ranging effects on myelin repair, immune modulation, and oxidative defense make it a powerful, low-risk tool especially when implemented during that early CIS window. Regular testing, targeted supplementation, and sun mindfulness form a practical foundation. That wraps our discussion on vitamin D and early-stage multiple sclerosis. For listeners eager to learn more, visit the Dr. Mercola site and consult qualified healthcare professionals before making high-dose changes. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate your commitment to informed health choices. Join us next time on Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom as we continue exploring evidence-based approaches to cellular resilience. Stay well, and we'll talk with you soon. Thanks for watching. 
Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.